Hey, it's Adrian. Today I'm taking a look at the all new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. So I am coming from the S22 Ultra. So I am really curious to see if the camera upgrades and chipset upgrade is worth that price. I got it in the black version. I'm not 100% sure I may change the color later, but let me know what you guys think is the best looking color so far. In the rest of the package, we have the SIM eject tool, manual, and Type-C to Type-C charging cable. There is no power brick. All right, so here's a quick first look of the S23 Ultra in Phantom Black. And I do have the S22 Ultra right nearby. And you can see they look pretty much the same from the back. However, if you look at the S23 Ultra, the camera lens do have a thick bezel or a silver type of ring that goes around them which is not found on the S22 Ultra. So that's how you can tell them apart really quickly. Now taking a look at the other features or other areas of the phone, you can see it's pretty much the same in terms of the buttons, the side, top, and finally the bottom of the phones, you can see everything is pretty much a mirror match. One of the other small design changes between the S22 and S23 Ultra is the curve. So you could see on the S22 Ultra, it's much more rounded and on the S23 Ultra, it's much less pronounced. So due to that curvature I pointed out, the screen also follows that same type of design. So you can see on the S22 Ultra, that the screen rolls off into the side frame much earlier, but on the S23 Ultra, the screen takes a little bit longer before it drops off into the frame. Might be hard to see on the black, but it is there. For those of you who are considering the Phantom Black, if you have, you know, kind of oily fingerprints like me, just be mindful that this is showing up very easily on the S23 Ultra, so you may want to run it with a case. Camera performance is going to be one of the big differentiators between the S23 and S22 Ultra. So you can see on the S23, when I'm in photo mode, I can cap out at 200 megapixels with the main lens and on the S22 Ultra, I cap out at 108 megapixels, still respectable, but I'm gonna be testing the 200 megapixel to see how much more of an improvement that is. However, one really important thing is that when we're in video mode and I go into the video frame rates and resolutions, I can go up to 8K30. However, on the S22 Ultra, it caps out at 8K24. Now the 8K24 option is not here in video mode. However, if you go over into the pro video mode, you can see you can cycle through and there we have 8K24 as well. And on the S22 Ultra, you can see that there is no 8K30. So for those of you who, you know, really need that 8K30, the S23 Ultra is definitely where you want to be. So one thing that I noticed with the S23 Ultra that I don't really notice on the S22 as much is that whenever I take a photo and I'm using that main camera, the main lens with 200 megapixels. So you can see when I take a photo, it actually has to load and think before it resolves that image and I'm ready to take the next photo. If I go into the camera gallery, you can see that it's actually loading the image. So I can't actually zoom in right now. I have to wait till that loading screen is gone or that loading icon and I can now take a look at the photo. So just to demonstrate that again, I'll go into the camera mode. I'm gonna take a photo right now. I'm gonna wait for it to finish loading there. And when I go in here again, I can't actually zoom into it until that loading icon is gone. And now I can take a look at the photo. Now, when I'm in the camera gallery, I just wanna point out that I did set it to RAW and JPEG and high efficiency is turned off. I, would, I just wanna get the best quality of photo. Now, if I do set it to JPEG only, and I take the same photo, you'll see it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. It still does have to load until I ha can go into the gallery. And again, I'm waiting on that loading icon. So just something to be mindful of. I'm only pointing this out because you can't really use this mode in a burst type of capacity. Obviously you're taking a very high resolution photo and it's not gonna be possible. So let's demo what happens if I try to just hold this down or quick fire it. So I can't actually quick fire. I have to wait until the camera lens is available to me again. By comparison, you could see with the S22 Ultra, I'm also going to be using the main lens and at the maximum megapixel 108, which is, you know, almost half of what the S23 is doing. So let's take a photo and you can see that that pops up almost instantaneously in the camera roll. And when I go into that, you know, right away, I can just go ahead and zoom into it. So 
it's much faster if I was gonna try to, you know, take a burst series of photos with the S22 Ultra. Now, if I go into the options just to show that everything's calibrated, right now it's set to RAW and JPEG, high efficiency is turned off. So I'm gonna set it to only JPEG and I'll run that same type of test. And you can see it pops up pretty much instantaneously and I can go into the camera gallery and take a look at that photo. So again, this is not, you know, any type of shortcoming on the S23 Ultra. It's resolving, you know, an image that's about twice the resolution of the S22 Ultra, but something to keep in mind. All right, here's just a really basic camera test. So this is a photo of a watch I took in a fully lit room, which you can see, and both phones, you know, they resolved the image, no problem. Now in night mode on the S22, it had a really hard time making out, you know, a lot of the details that the S23 did pick up. And this was a pitch black room, so the S23 definitely has a better night mode. These next set of images are all unedited. So the S22 Ultra is on the left, S23 Ultra on the right. And what do you guys prefer? So if you take a look at the S22 Ultra and you take a look at the sun, you could see there's a bit of discoloration, you know, haloing with the sun. On the S23 Ultra, it manages the sun much better. And this is a challenging scene for a lot of cameras to shoot into the sun. And you do see a bit more detail in the S23 Ultra. The photo is a bit lighter, but you can also argue it's a little bit more washed out. So it kind of is personal preference on this, I think. In this image, both cameras are taking really sharp photos. But if you look at the wall, the wall on the S22 seems, you know, really brightened up. And on the S23 Ultra, it looks more true to life. On this image, it's a bit harder for me to pick an image that I prefer, but I think I'm leaning towards the S22 Ultra. Overall, it seems to be a brighter image. And if you take a look at the chair at the bottom right of both photos on the S23 Ultra, it seems maybe a little bit more saturated and the overall tone of the image is a little bit warmer. Now you do see a little bit more detail in like the flower petals because there's not as many bright or highlighted spots. So again, I think personal preference here. I'll be cropping into these images to get a bit more detail in my full review, but for now, what do you think of the S23's cameras compared to the S22's cameras? Is there enough of a difference to make you consider the S23 Ultra? When it comes to 8K video, you could see that the S22 Ultra looks a little bit more choppy compared to the S23 Ultra, and that's thanks to the S23 Ultra's ability to record in 30 frames per second. Both screens are very snappy and you can see they look pretty much indistinguishable from each other. All right, so I have the S23 just set up kind of like a first boot, so I've noticed a couple of things. So the refresh rate seems to be pretty much in line with the S22 Ultra, so you can see as I'm going through the different menus, they're kind of reacting the same way. One thing that does look a little bit different though is if I go into the settings on the S22 and then on the S23, for some reason, it looks like the color temperature is a little bit different than on the S23 Ultra. It looks a little bit warmer to me. And I've gone into the display options for both of them. And I've confirmed that, you know, the eye comfort shield mode is off. You can see it's off on both of them. As well, the screen mode, it is set to vivid on both. And the temperature setting is the same. If I go into advance, you can see everything is at the default. now. If I move the S23 Ultra to the coolest temperature, then it's a bit more in line with what I'm seeing on S22, but when they're exactly in the same area, it does look a bit warmer here. Now let's just go to the extreme end. And even looking at it in person, I'm not sure how it's coming across in camera, but looking at it in person directly, this is still a little bit bluer and this is still a warmer color tone. Since the S23 Ultra does have a faster chipset than the S22 Ultra, it should be quicker at launching apps. So let's do YouTube for a test. And you can see it did load up here a little bit quicker than it's loading up on the S22 Ultra. Now that could be due to, you know, the internet connection. So let's try that again. So YouTube. And you can see it just loads a little bit quicker on the S23 Ultra. Now let's try another app. So for example, let's do the Play Store. And again, it loaded a little bit quicker than on the S22 Ultra over here. So yeah, not the most scientific test, but you can see it does seem that, you know, at early glance, the S23 Ultra is opening apps a little bit quicker, which makes sense. But in my full review, I will test that with games and a bit more apps, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so please do remember to stay tuned for my full review of the S23 Ultra versus S22 Ultra. Obviously, this is just a really quick video to highlight some of the quick differences, but I will go more in depth in my full review, and I'll be comparing the thermals 
gaming performance, battery life, camera. So if that's interesting to you, please hit the like and remember to subscribe. Now, if there's anything you want me to cover in particular in the full review, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get around to that as well. Thanks again and I'll see you soon. Bye.